I spent lots of years trying to do most of my work on an iPad Pro, uh, 9.7 inch iPad Pro to start. Then I got a, you know, one of the square sided iPad Pros like you see behind me, the 2018 model, I suppose, with one terabyte of storage. And honestly, I loved it. I really like how focused it was. I really like how the window management system works and how you really have to focus on one thing at a time. You don't just, you know, have scattered windows all over, which are, I find easier um, to steal your focus in Mac OS. But eventually I just realized I was fighting the system more than I was actually getting things done. So I went back to Mac OS, my primary working environment, and my iPad became kind of my laptop, my supplemental computer. My MacBook Air barely ever left my desk, now I've upgraded to a Mac Studio, and it never leaves my desk because it doesn't have a screen. But with the advent of Stage Manager for iPad OS 16, even though it's buggy, I'm not saying you should use it, you really have a lot more capabilities with your iPad. And that has led me to finally work on building an iPad desk, which you see behind me, which is what we're gonna talk about today. I'll start with the desk. It's made of a three quarter inch piece of plywood that I cut and laminated together. It's 48 inches wide, 30 inches deep. Most of the times when I looked at desks, they were simply too narrow. They weren't as deep as I wanted, or and then they were, if they were, they were like way too long, like 72 inches deep, far more than I need. Four inches by 30 inches is perfect. It gives me enough space on the desk that I can push my keyboard back and do stuff in front of the desk. Say like change batteries in a kid's uh, remote control car, or I have to change the battery in my old uh, MacBook Air coming up because the battery is just dead, not doing very well, and it's going to be graduated down to the children. So I need to do that at some point, and this gives me a nice work area to do that on while still having lots of space. After cutting and laminating the desk together, I finished it with Varathane Weathered Oak Stain two coats, so the gray lines came out dark enough, and then I used five coats of their Diamond Finish product. Sanded with 1500 grit in between to make sure that it was nice and smooth. I originally finished the wood up to 400 grit just to make sure, again, the wood surface I was going on was nice and smooth. The legs I used for this desk were just on sale at Home Depot. They're fine, a little too tall for my needs. I like them a little lower, but I looked and I actually ordered a sit stand desk and it was even taller. So I need to actually spend a fair bit on an expensive one that goes lower than some of the you know, 299 models in the Canadian prices. The iPad I'm using currently is an M1 iPad Pro with one terabyte of storage. I had skipped the, you know, the GPU bump 2020 iPad Pro because it just wasn't worth it based on the 2018 specs. And I'm glad I did because then I had you know, plenty of money. I had plenty of time to save up to buy this one terabyte iPad Pro. The iPad is mounted on a homemade Visa stand, and I'll link to a video up above where I built it. Um, I actually built the plywood and then glued a cover of an iPad to it so that I can just magnet my iPad off and on the stand without needing to um, do, you know, do any mounting, do any clamping, stuff like that. It's mounted to a inexpensive Visa arm. I have two of them the brand are different, but they're the exact same. The second one is used for the LG 27 UL 500 27 inch monitor um, that I use. Actually, I have three of them. I have two at my Mac OS station. I have one at my iPad station. Now, having my iPad on this arm means that I can pull it forward when I'm doing, you know, art style stuff when I want to use the pencil. I use this regularly for Canva or for Procreate when I'm actually building thumbnails. I don't use the Apple Pencil a lot for anything outside of that, but I use it, you know, a couple times a week to build thumbnails, and I like being able to pull the iPad forward to get right in, do photo editing, do uh, thumbnail design right on the iPad up close on the Visa arm, and I can position it in a spot for me. To the back of the wood, I have mounted a CalDigit Element Thunderbolt 4 hub. I've used this hub since it came out. It's just been mounted back there, and I leave it there, and it's great. Um, Probably the only drawback with this is that it doesn't have a long cord that came with it. Um, and that's just Thunderbolt 4 in general until recently with OWC when they make long enough cords that I, and I would like to get one and actually go from the Element Hub to my Kensington Thunderbolt 4 dock, which is just in a drawer now because I got the CalDigit TS4 dock for my Mac. By using the Kensington dock kind of mounted to the back of my desk with the mounting plate I got, then I can use it um, and have access to USB-C ports, SD card slots, other stuff like that at a better position than I currently get with the CalDigit Hub mounted on the back of my iPad. To get maximum internet speed, I actually have this wired with the USB-C Ethernet adapter, which lets me get up to, you know, seven, 800 megabytes per second. Uh, this is useful when I'm uploading uh, videos from my iPad, which I don't do as much as I used to. Uh, I was using LumaFusion to edit videos. Now I'm mostly using uh, Final Cut, 
but I know my cycling videos that I do on a secondary channel, I edit all those on the iPad because it's just easier. I can take it with me when I'm editing. And from there, I always want to bring it back down and plug it in and get wired internet to upload because, you know, a four or five gig video will take an hour on wireless and it seems to take, you know, take a few minutes uh, on a wired connection. As I said earlier, I'm using a LG 27 UL 500. It's a 27 inch 4K monitor. So it's Ultra HD, but I just, I've never used the HD feature. So it doesn't seem to need it. So I just don't worry about it. Ultimately, it's not like the highest end bestest monitor, but it has a nice picture. It works well. I had two of them already. So all my monitors match. I have no problems with the current one. You know, uh, it would have been nice maybe to get a USB-C one, but this one was on sale for like $150 off when I went to look at it again for the iPad desk. So of course, I went with the same monitor I have because I like it. For my input devices, I'm using my Mojo 68 keyboard. Um, I still like it. I love the controls. I love the key feel. It is by far my favorite iPad keyboard. I've done a review on that. There'll be a link up above. For a trackpad, I have the black Apple Magic trackpad. I spent a little bit more for black just so I can tell it different from the white one I have with my Mac OS setup. That way I never mix them up. I know which one is connected to which device because unfortunately the trackpads for Apple do not do a good job of being able to switch between devices. For audio, I kind of have two options. One of them is I play off to the Sonos speakers that are on my bookshelf behind me. The other one, and I often use this actually with my iPad, especially in the mornings when my kids and everyone's asleep, is I use my AirPods Max. They are great. I just did a video on them recently and there'll be a link to that. And it, they're just great. They give me a lot of noise isolation. They are good audio. I have no complaints about them. They're excellent headphones. Now, desk accessories. It's kind of switched back and forth between either of my desks, or you can see my iPad desk behind me so you can see how close it is to my Mac OS setup. Um, are the Rubik's Cubes there? I have got a classic cube for my wife for Christmas, and I found that it was really good to fidget with, and it was a good stand-in for when I'd reach for my phone when I'm waiting for a you know, a server to start up or something else, and a YouTube video to upload, and I'm just kind of waiting for that process to finish. I can grab the cube, I can solve it, I can fidget with it when I'm just, you know, reading something and I want to do something with my hands. I love it. I got myself a faster speed cube as well. So the links to both of those if you're interested in them below. Now I have a few desk mat options. I have a large LTT one from my main desk. And then I have the wool one, which is what I'm using currently now on my iPad desk. I might go a little bigger with this. This was actually from a previous um, desk setup and I liked it then. It's possibly a little narrow now. So I might actually get a bigger one for this desk just so that I have more uh, more space to put stuff on on the desk that still protects the surface. I keep my coffee warm. I looked at all those, you know, fancy hundred dollar mugs that you can just take with you. And but honestly, for about twenty bucks, I've got this excellent little disc that you just turn on. It warms your cup. Works as any cup. It's excellent. <laughs> That's it. It's just excellent. Um, I have it plugged in and set up to be on my main Mac OS desk, but the cord is long enough that I can just pull it over and use it on my iPad desk as well. I can't find the exact one I have, at least with the same stickers on it, but I'll link to the one that I have below and you can just get it. It's exactly the same. It's like many things on Amazon. It's branded differently from different companies. Cable management, I use an Ikea Signum, which is that wire Ikea tray you see everywhere. Now, of course, it does show your cables, especially from the backside, but honestly, I'm never at the backside, so what do I care? Like, I come in, I walk around the desk, and I sit down, and then I just keep doing my work. So from my side, the cables are up out of the way, and I don't have to worry about them. Perfect. Also mounted my power bar on the bottom. For those of you that have never mounted a power bar, it can be a pain in the butt to find the screw holes. Best thing I've ever found to do is to put a power bar down, mark it with a piece of paper and pencil and like mark where the holes are, and then tape it to the bottom of your desk where you want it and screw the piece of paper to the desk or screw put the screws through the paper holes that you just made. Once you've done that, you can then rip the paper off and mount the power bar nicely. I've also added Velcro control strips to this because those Velcro strips mean that I can uh, mount the power bar and when I'm taking stuff off and on it, it still stays affixed. I did find sometimes just using screws that occasionally it would slip off the screws and I had to mount it with like, you know, a whole bunch of stuff plugged in and it would yank on the cable. So adding the control strips means it's harder to get off, but since I'm only doing that when I switch the desk and I'm having a major change, I, it's fine. I'll just fight with it that time or I'll even just take the control strips off. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then it stays firmly affixed when I need it, when I'm switching cables in and out, which does happen, um, but it is still easily removable later. Now, the real reason I made this switch is because of Stage Manager, and it has really enabled me to do a lot more work again on my iPad, to do more writing on my iPad. I'm gonna start looking back at doing different programming on my iPad. Um, because of it makes good use of my second screen. Now, I am by no means saying that you should be using Stage Manager at this point. It is buggy. It's gonna crash on you. It's gonna have blank screens sometimes. Uh, occasionally, my keyboard just won't 
input into my device. So I have to like restart the device, but seeing like a full screen behind me that you can see over my shoulder right now and being able to reuse that full screen, be able to move windows around, be able to have a couple things on the screen is excellent. Even having like something primary on my main display and having something secondary, say a reference or an article I'm reading on my iPad is excellent. Stage Manager has really reopened the iPad for me in many ways where I had, you know, decided what it was for. It's opened it up to a lot more things for me and I will be using it a lot more in the future. Um, I really like, and I've actually done a whole video on what I like about Stage Manager already, so I'll link to that below. And overall, I, you know, like I said at the beginning, I really just like how the iPad is a focused environment, even with the advent of Stage Manager, with it being added to the device. It's just a much more focused environment. It means that what I'm really focusing on is the one window in front of me, maybe a secondary window, but I'm not having, you know, six things all over. And because I've chose to set it up without a whole bunch of notifications, it means it's not bugging me all the time for things that come in. I can really just focus on the work at hand without feeling distracted like I do by managing Windows on macOS. That's it. I'd love to hear what your iPad desk setup is like or what your ideal setup is like, what you think of State Manager. You can do all that in the comments below. If you liked the video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. And honestly, though, like turn off the notifications. You got work to do, stuff like that. Don't wait for my videos to come out every week. Other things you can do to support the channel, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education, or you can find my courses linked below on Skillshare. Have an excellent day.